Welcome back to MedCry Medical and in today's video we shall be looking at one of the odontogenic tumors known as ameloblastoma. An ameloblastoma is a, a true neoplasm that is a rare benign tumor of odontogenic epithelium and is known to occur on the lower jaw most commonly than the upper jaw. This term ameloblastoma is derived from an early English word amel that means enamel and a Greek word blastos meaning a germ. When we say ameloblastoma is a true neoplasm, we mean that it has both benign and malignant features. And while this tumor is usually a non-malignant or non-metastatic and progresses slowly, the resulting lesion usually causes a severe abnormalities of the face and the jaw leading to severe disfiguration of a person's face. The World Health Organization has classified ameloblastomas into four types, the conventional ameloblastomas, unicystic ameloblastoma, a metastasized ameloblastoma, and peripheral ameloblastomas. The conventional ameloblastoma was the one that was known uh, previously as solid or multicystic ameloblastoma. It usually presents with multiple large cystic areas. Ionicystic ameloblastoma is a type of uh, this ameloblastoma with a single cyst cavity and it accounts for about 10% of all the ameloblastomas. It is usually present in younger patients in the second and third decades of life and often related to a rapid uh, third molar. The third type is a metastasizing ameloblastoma that is histologically atypical and can rarely lead to metastasis and the type of metastasis that is usually called by ameloblastoma is a lung metastasis. The last type is a peripheral ameloblastoma uh, that composes of 2% of all the ameloblastomas. Ameloblastoma, which is a part of the autogenic epithelium that is responsible for enamel production and eventual crown formation, and this evidence the separation of a matrix known as there is an evidence that a suppression of what's known as matrix metalloproteinase 2 may inhibit local invasiveness of ameloblastoma. Same is for alpha 5 beta 1 integrin. This type of tumors uh, can be found in both in the maxilla and the mandible, although majority of them, up to 80% of the cases, are situated on the mandible with the posterior ramus era being the most frequent site. The neoplasms are often associated with the presence of an erupted tooth, displacement of adjacent teeth, and resorption of roots. The lesion has a tendency to expand the bony cartilages because the slow growth rate of the lesion always allows time for the periosteum to develop a thin shell of bone ahead of the expanding lesion. This shell of bone cracks when it is palpated, and due to this, this phenomenon is referred to as an eggshell cracking or crepitus and is one of the important diagnostic features for ameloblastoma. A maxillary ameloblastoma can be dangerous or even lethal in these patients due to a thin bone and a weak barrier. This neoplasm can extend into the sinonasal passages, the regomaxillary fossa and eventually into the cranium and the brain. What are the risk facts for what are the risk factors for the development of ameloblastomas? The common risk factors are a dentigerous cyst, impacted teeth, injury to the jaw and the mouth, infection of the teeth or the gums, and gum inflammation. And some of the less common risk factors that are associated with ameloblastoma development are infection by viruses, lack of proteins in the diet and lack of minerals, in the diet. You will find patients presenting with some slow growing, painless swelling that leads to facial deformity and some loose teeth and malocclusion. These are the key features in ameloblastomas. And the diagnosis is tentatively uh, made through a radiographic examination and is confirmed by histological biopsy. Radiographically, 
this ameloblastoma appears as a rounded and well-defined lucency in the bone with a varying size and features. So numerous cyst-like radiolucent areas can also be seen in larger tumors which are multilocular, giving it a characteristic soap bubble appearance. So a single radiolucent area can be seen in a smaller tumors that is unilocular, but numerous cyst-like radiolucent areas are seen in larger tumors which are multilocular. However, these ameloblastomas show more bone expansion and seldom show high density areas. So some differential diagnoses for ameloblastomas that you may think of are keratocystic odontogenic tumor, central giant granuloma, and odontogenic myxoma. In its management, chemotherapy, radiation therapy, and curatage and liquid nitrogen have been effective in some cases of ameloblastoma, but surgical resection and enucleation are the most definitive treatment for ameloblastomas. So surgery is the most common treatment of this neoplasm and a conservative treatment requires a very careful case selection. When looking at surgical resection, the aim of this treatment is to remove the entire tumor with the margin of surrounding tissue, the word is known as a block resection, via procedure known as block resection. This is good for a good prognosis. Preferably, a 10 mm of normal bone that is around the neoplasm is removed and larger ameloblastomas require a partial resection of the jaw bone followed by bone grafting. Then the second procedure is known as enucleation. Some smaller mandible neoplasms are enucleated where the cavity of the tumor is curated, allowing preservation of the bone cortex and the lower body of the mandible. Although the recurrence of this tumor, although this type has a higher recurrence of the tumors, and unicystic ameloblastomas that are called intraluminal unicystic or plexiform unicystic ameloblastomas can be enucleated as the epithelium is only limited to the inner cyst and the lumen. Radiation is usually ineffective in many cases of ameloblastomas and uh, there has been reports of some sarcomas being induced as a result of using radiation to treat these ameloblastomas. And also uh, chemotherapy on the other end is not really much effective. So persistent follow-up Examination includes radiographs essential for managing ameloblastomas. A persistent follow-up examination with radiographs is essential for managing of patients with ameloblastoma. And a follow-up should occur at regular intervals for at least 10 years. And this is important because 50% of all the recurrences occur within 5 years postoperatively. When looking at the epidemiology of ameloblastomas, people with African heritage have a high instance compared to Caucasians, with the site oven being the midline of the mandible. And the annual incidence rates of millions of the annual incidence rates per million people for ameloblastomas is 1.96% for males, 1.20 for black females, 0.18 for white males, and 0.44 for white females. Ameloblastomas usually account for about 1% of all the oral tumors and about 18% of odontogenic tumors. Men and women are equally affected, though women average four years longer than men, though women average four years younger than men when tumors first occur and tumors run larger in females. Thank you for following us to the end of this video. We like to request that you subscribe, like and share.